NASCAR series. Uh, they competed at Portland this weekend. Uh, such a brilliant circuit, such a short circuit as well. And uh, what an exciting championship. Um, the race wasn't exciting as much. Uh, it was kind of lackluster, to be honest with you. But it does create some stories. It does basically create a epic championship ending, hopefully, because now we've only got three or so races left of the 2024 season, and the championship is still well and truly alive, especially after the fact that Will Power, after horribly unlucky and unfortunate um, last few races, especially last time out, um, I can't even remember where the track was, but uh, he unfortunately crashed um, during a restart when Rossi literally went on the back of him uh, and ruined his day. Um, but he is still in the championship fight after taking the win in Portland this weekend, uh, and it has significant, significantly shaken up the championship race. Um, Power claimed his third win of the season, uh, and he finished ahead of Alex Pillow, who finished P2. Now, Alex is actually the championship leader, so keep in mind that is really crucial there. Um, it, yeah, like I said, there wasn't a huge amount of racing, at least, or exciting racing, uh, one noticeable thing, though, was the fact that Roman Grosjean um, got in a pickle um, earlier. He unfortunately lost control heading into turn one, uh, but that's not the issue. The fact that he rejoined into an oncoming traffic, that is uh, the concern there. So, basically, um, Roman Grosjean um, was... He spun into Rasmus, Rasmussen, who's actually a rookie this season, I believe. He he, um, he spun into his line as he went to correct himself. Unfortunately, Rasmussen went straight into the rear tire of Roman Grosjean. And unfortunate for Rasmussen, um, his front wing was damaged, and he ended up finishing a lap down um, due to that. And Roman Grosjean, embarrassingly, also ran off the track on the way back to the pit lane as well with a puncture. Um, after that incident, um, he he didn't impress the commentators. I tell you that James Hinchcliffe, who, if you don't know, he is a ex IndyCar driver, an icon of the sport. Uh, he wasn't too impressed with Grosjean's decision to rejoin the active track. I should say, uh, he qu I quote him here. He said that was lazy. That was foolish to not look in your mirror and know who or what was coming and turn. Yeah, it was really unprofessional from the ex-Formula 1 driver. Of course, he hasn't been known as the cleanest driver or the most fantastic driver. Of course, he's also most notably known for crashing out during the safety car at Baku many, many years ago when he was warming up his tyres. He warmed up so hard that he went into the wall. Scott McLaughlin style. Um, Alex won't be happy me saying that. But uh, given credit to Scott, he actually had issues with the car, which why he turned back in supercars. But yeah, no, it, it's really embarrassing from a Formula One driver to, to make mistakes like that. But uh, it's something, you know, you understand a rookie like Rasmussen might, mis might, might like might, he might make. But Grosjean, oh boy, he uh, definitely uh, didn't show his professionalism this weekend. Speaking of Scott McLaughlin, he, uh, he was actually quite quick this weekend. Um, he ended up finishing seventh. Um, now you're probably wondering, gee, that's not, you know, that's not a win. So that's not quick, is it? Uh, he actually topped the two practice sessions, I believe. Um, but unfortunately he started last because he had a, an engine change or something like that. Um, an unapproved engine change because it's similar to formula one. You get it changed, you need a penalty, et cetera, et cetera. So he started from the back, but he climbed his way all the way up to seventh, which is really impressive from the Kiwi. Uh, as you know, he, he's still in the championship hunt, although it's starting to become a little bit unlikely now as we move slowly away. Um, let's have a look here. He is okay. He's, he's a bit further away now, but speaking of that though, Scott Dixon, um, who, as you may know, was in the championship hunt. I think he was P2 or P3 at the time. He had a crash lap one. Uh, he ran off the circuit. Um, and he re he tried to rejoin, um, nothing Grosjean style. So that was okay. But unfortunately he, uh, I think fitter Powdy actually pushed him off the circuit, smack bang into the wall and his day was done on lap one. 
which also means, unfortunately, his championship um, fight is probably over. He's got, uh, well, for context, P3 here, Colton Herter is 417. Scott Dixon's got 383 now. And Scott McLaughlin, by the way, has 396. And Alex Plo has 484. That's the leader at the moment. So he's a full 100 points, or just 99 points away from Alex. So it's going to be really hard as we head into the final three stage, three races of the week, of the year, or three rounds. Um, but yeah, it's really unfortunate. That's the thing in motor racing. Um, I'm not too sure if if um, Fittipaldi actually got a penalty for that. Um, I believe he did, but it, it looked really awkward. Like it was. Because it, it, it was a little right-hander kink, there was nothing that you could you could really do. You're like, come on, like, it, it, what do you know? If you are watching on YouTube, for example, um, or if hey, if you want to reach out to us, let us know your opinion on the crash. Um, if Fittipaldi deserved that penalty or not, uh, let us know. Um, you're more than welcome to. Of course, this gets ch chopped up into YouTube pieces, you know, afterwards, so you can check that out if you want. Um. But, uh, yeah, really unfortunate for him. But, like I said, Will Power has now closed the gap. He's now only 14 points away from Alex Pelot after that win. Uh, it was, like I said, a crucial, crucial win here. It's sensational to see. Um, so, with that being said, um, let's have a quick look at the top 10 of the IndyCar race. So, as I said, Will Power got the win for that one ahead of Alex Pelot. Um, Penske teammate Joseph Newgarden finished P3. Of course, he's the he was the one to beat last time out. Uh, he won that one. Colton Herter finished P4 um, ahead of Marcus Armstrong, the XF2 driver. Uh, Marcus Ericsson, the XF1 driver, finished P6 ahead of Scotty Mack in 7th. Santino Ferrici, who actually... Um, I want to shout out him, actually, um, because... Uh, he actually got his first pole position in IndyCar. Uh, so he did very well in quality to get that pole. Um, it's also a, he also achieved a landmark moment for AJ Foyt Racing. Uh, he secured the team's first IndyCar pole since 2014. So it's certainly been quite a long time since that team has been on the front. Unfortunately, though, he wasn't able to execute that. So he finished P8, though. Uh, Graham Rohall in ninth position, and Cole Kirkwood uh, rounds up the 10. Um, so I'm very excited to see how this IndyCar um, championship unfolds. Uh, we head into Milwaukee next time, next out, next time out this weekend, I believe. It's actually a double header. Um, it's going to be epic. I can't wait. Can Will Power steal the championship lead from Alex Pelot? It's going to be very interesting. So I highly check it. Highly recommend checking out the IndyCar series here on end. It's going to be a cracking, cracking weekend of racing. Absolutely.